We went on the inaugural sailing of the Icon of the Seas, and I got to tell you, it was an amazing ship. But there are five observations that we made, and we want to go over those with you right now. Hey, what's going on, Adventure Fam? Hope you're doing well. Hope you had a great weekend and a great Monday yesterday. We just got back from Disneyland yesterday, and it was a fantastic trip. But before we jump into this video about the Icon of the Seas, I want to go ahead and invite you to subscribe. It's that little white button that says subscribe down below. We are three people away from hitting a thousand so you can be part of the adventure fam and we would greatly appreciate it and uh, go ahead and hit that notification bell because we want you to be a part of our adventure fam and know when we post and drop a like for this video because we're going to go over some tips uh, when you're going on the icon of the seas so again we would appreciate your support and uh, without further ado let's jump into the video about the icon of the seas all right so like i said we're back from disneyland it was a fantastic trip but that is not what this video is about this video is about the icon of the seas as you you may know we went on the inaugural sailing of the icon of the seas and if you didn't see those vlogs go ahead and check them out after you finish this video of course and go check out those vlogs uh, but you know the icon of the seas you've heard you've seen it is an amazing ship and uh, it, it's absolutely unbelievable um, there's so many different things about the icon of the seas there's so many different venues there's so many different entertainment options there's so many different things to keep you entertained and occupying your time while you're on board uh, whether you're six or 60 whether you're two years old or 200 years old it doesn't matter there's something for you on board the ship now what i want to do today in today's video is i want to drop five observations on you from our trip and our time on board the icon of the seas these are five things that we have noticed and observed and it can serve as a few different tips as well and so we just wanted to drop that on you and give you the information and do what with do with it what you want. Is that how you say it? do do with it what you please? However you say it, we want to provide it to you. So without further ado, let's jump into observation number one. So observation number one is this: you need to prioritize what you want to do, and that goes without saying. With a ship this large, with so many different bars and venues and eateries and activities and um, shows and just everything in between, um, you need to prioritize what you want to do. If you're if you're going on a seven night sailing, you don't have time to do everything on board, so you're going to need to prioritize. What does that mean? That means look at the ship ahead of time. Depending on the group you're going with, look ahead of time. See what's going to fit your family schedule or you know your schedule with who you're traveling. See what kind of things you that are going to be going on that interest you. Look at different cruise planners. Look at different venues, um, activities, and things like that ahead of time. And try to plan it out as best you can. Um, definitely when you're going on vacation on a cruise, we, you want to be relaxed and you want to just kind of go with the flow. But at the same time, what you don't want to do is get to the ship and not have anything planned out. And then you're not able to do some of the things you want to do. So make sure that you're planning things out and prioritize the things that you want to do. And after you do your priority list, if there's other things that you're able to do in between and you find time to do them, it's an extra bonus because what you don't want is at the end of the cruise, you don't want to look back and say, man, we should have done that because there are certain things that we didn't get to do um, more so time restraints because we did get to book pretty much everything we wanted for the most part. And so we didn't get to do other things that we wanted to do, though, like we never relaxed in the overlook pods and the overlook bar. We did go to it and we did see it and we did kind of um, go to film it, but we never really took the time to go out and just hang out for an hour and just, uh, you know, you know, observe from up up there. So there's there are certain things that you need to prioritize and so that is going to be our observation number one and it should go without saying because the ship is large so you want to make sure you prioritize everything that you want to do and then again anything on top of that is going to be extra observation number two which bleeds into observation number one is if you can skip a port day and stay on the ship if you're going to certain ports that maybe you've been before or certain ports that you know that there's nothing that you really want to do um, stay on stay on board stay on the ship the reason being is because a lot of people are going to be getting off and so some of those things and some of those eateries maybe or some of those activities that you want to do maybe you do them in a port day right some of the activities as well like the crown's edge was actually cheaper during a port day than it was a sea day right so if you want to do the crown 
Sound's Edge, but you don't want to spend the ridiculous amount of money to do it, um, that's a great time to do that. So if you can stay on board, and now some of the shows obviously aren't going to be running because they don't run the major production shows during the time that you're in port, um, but you might be able to do some of the eateries uh, for lunch and you might be able to do some of the other activities on board if you want to get on the sport court without having to be packed with a mini golf course or just have the pool a little bit to yourself or a lounge or a bar, whatever the case may be. A lot of times you can do that while you're in a port day because a lot of people are off maybe on the island shopping, doing an excursion, something like that. So if you can, just stay on board while everybody's off and do a lot of your activities then. So that is observation number two. If there's a port that you don't necessarily need to get off at, stay on board and explore the ship, see all the nooks and crannies, go to the different uh, venues and uh, check it out during a port day. So observation number three is you're going to want to book the Empire Supper Club if you have the funds and the availability to do so. This is something we did not do, regrettably. And uh, look, part of it was it wasn't available when we were on board. And secondarily, we weren't sure if it was going to be worth the money. However, after talking to so many people and seeing so many reviews and uh, just seeing the discussions about it, I believe it's worth it, right? And the next time we're on the Icon of the Seas, we will probably do it. And so... If you have the availability, if it's available for you and you've got the funds, book the Empire Supper Club. My understanding is that it's an amazing experience. Um, even though it's quite pricey, um, it's something that uh, if you've got the money to do, uh, go ahead and do it. My initial reactions and our initial reactions, was, we were like, no way. We're not paying close to $600 for two people. Um, however, Based upon everything that we've seen and all the people we've talked to about it, um, everybody has said it's well worth it. So if that's something that uh, you can, you know, you can swing, um, go ahead and do that because I think it's going to be an experience that you'll remember and you won't regret. Now, observation number four is going to be two in one, and that is going to be that the Pearl Cafe and the Overlook Bar and Pods are complete game changers for the Icon of the Seas. Now, starting with the Pearl Cafe, this is going to be um, right above the big pearl in the center of the promenade. You walk up the steps and it's right up there. Now, one of the things that makes this a great game changer is the view. The view is absolutely stunning from up there. The floor to ceiling windows are unbelievable to look out to the ocean and just there's a bunch of seating. Uh, to relax. When we were on board, there was a lot of people still working, a lot of people with their laptops, um, and, and it was an amazing view. Uh, secondarily, uh, the food that they offer at the Pearl Cafe, um, such as sandwiches and salads and fruits and all kinds of different things, uh, was amazing. They were all great. They were good. They were yummy. Um, and it's all included in your cruise fare. There's also a coffee shop up there, um, not included in your cruise fare, but if you have a drinks package, it's included. Um, does get busy. Um, the line does get quite long uh, because they do serve Starbucks coffee up there as well. Um, but still, um, it is an amazing view. The atmosphere up there is, is quite amazing. So the Pearl Cafe um, is, is a total game changer. As far as the Overlook Bar and Pods, um, this is a game changer because this is new to the Icon class. The big glass dome on the front of the ship. Um, when you're in there, it's almost unbelievable um, to see it in person. The seating arrangements, uh, the colors, um, the big floor to ceiling uh, glass windows that oversee the front of the ship. Um, absolutely stunning. The Overlook Bar down there, the atmosphere, um, the vibe is just, it, it's just something different. And I said it in our, our review video of it. You've got to see, you got to be there to actually feel it and see it. It doesn't do it justice to see it on a video um, or through the lens of somebody else, um, but it is absolutely stunning. And then you got the Overlook Pods. These are little pods that are first come, first serve. And you can come in there and uh, you can go up there and you kind of just relax and sit. There's little tables, um, little benches in there. And uh, uh, they're just it, it, the overall atmosphere of this entire um, area of the ship behind the aqua dome is absolutely stunning. So that is observation number four: the Pearl Cafe and the Overlook Bar and Pods, complete game changers for the Icon of the Seas. Now, observation number five is going to have to do with the seating at the shows on board the Icon of the Seas. Now, there's three main shows on board the Icon of the Seas. You have Wizard of Oz, then you Aqua Action, the Aqua Dome Water Show, and then you also have Absolute Zero Elemental Starburst Beauty, which is the ice skating show. And we're going to kind of tackle these one by one very quickly. Now, when it comes to the Wizard of Oz, 
Um, the observation and the tip that we have for you is this. Sit as close to the stage as you can, kind of near the center of uh, uh, the room. So the reason being is during the show, there are some elements of the show when you're close to the action like that. There's some f overhead flying. There's some um, different bubbles and different wind effects and things like that that you really get a good sense and a feel when you're down below on the lower um, level closest to the stage and in the center of it. It just brings the show a little bit closer to you. Um, certainly the show would be amazing from anywhere you're sitting, but if you're on the lower bowl in the middle, uh, you're going to get a much better better experience that's where we sat um, and we were kind of looking up like this um, kind of seeing people fly overhead and uh, it was absolutely amazing so if you're going to Wizard of Oz you're going to want to sit in the lower bowl towards the stage in the middle if you can next is going to be the aqua theater and the aqua action show now the seating for this because we never got actual reservations that were all sold out but we found this tip and trick while we were on board and so what you have is the actual seating for the aqua dome um, which is the benches that semi-circle around the actual water action but then all the way at the very top behind all of the reserve seating are open seats now these aren't open for everybody these are actually classified as handicap accessible seating now what you can do is kind of wait in the back and if nobody sits in those chairs prior to the show they will allow you to sit there so that's exactly what we did we were able to snag a tabletop um, up top and these chairs are actually much more comfortable uh, Sorry, Siri. And these chairs are actually much more comfortable than the actual aqua theater seating. So that is a actual tip. If you can't get a reservation, um, certainly you can sit up top in the very back of the theater um, so long as nobody sits there. And uh, you should be able to get a very comfortable seat up there and enjoy the show. So as far as the ice skating rink goes for the shows, about 99% of the seats are going to be great seats. There's only a few that are actually going to be obstructed by the poles. We got there about 30 minutes early and we were actually able to sit in the very first row right next to the ice and enjoy the show that way so um, as long as you get there a little bit early um, don't get there late um, you should be able to great get a great seat in um, the ice show so um, those are my five observations that we saw I'm sure there are plenty of uh, other observations um, that we can go over and make a huge long hour-long video going over those um, but those are five of my top observations from the icon of the seas again it's an amazing ship we had an amazing time if you're going on the icon of the seas let me know down below or if you've been on it let us know how you liked it and so we're in the process of planning our next cruise. We're not going on a cruise this summer. We're actually um, thinking about a different vacation with the kids, potentially Pigeon Forge and going over to Tennessee and checking that out. So, um, but we're still trying to plan our next cruise. However, let us know if you've been on the Icon or if you're going on the Icon. Those are our five observations and we hope you enjoyed the video. I love you guys and uh, thanks for your support. Again, if you haven't subscribed, we invite you to subscribe and uh, be a part of our adventure fam. So without further ado, we'll see you tomorrow. Peace.